Okay, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming tonight. We're going to do our uh, town hall meeting. What we, we do, we have one of these about every six months. Uh, the staff will give their reports on what they have completed in the last six months, and uh, we'll have a few minutes for questions. And uh, um, so I want to start with the report. So I want to thank the Boys and Girls Club for uh, letting us be here tonight. I think we need to give them a round of applause. In my report tonight, um, in the last six months, some of the things that we have completed in the city is uh, six months ago, we opened up the flyover. I don't know if any of y'all have been able to get on the flyover, but it was quite an accomplishment. We have begun the uh, downtown parking deck. We started that last month, which will help with the parking situation in the downtown area. Um, we have started recycling for over 2,000 apartments in the city in the last six months. 50 new businesses are involved in our glass recycling program. On the sidewalk program, we have completed 21,500 feet so far this year, which is a record for the city. Uh, we are starting construction real soon on a new recycling and trash center. Um, we opened up the regional park bids in January next month, and we'll start the construction of the new regional park probably on toward spring or summer. We gave away 750 trees at a tree giveaway in October. This is something that y'all be real interested in. Ruble Road begins probably, what do you think? Where's Chris? Spring? Uh, spring to mid next year, yes. Yeah. Spring to summer, we'll start Ruble Road. I thought you would. <laughs> yes. Um, trails, we've completed 3.5 miles of trails. 2.5 miles of bike lanes. Zion Road is supposed to start in the spring. Um, Fritz Giesler and Doug Lanston, we received two Emmys for Recycle Something, a national award. So that was quite an accomplishment. Let us know, talk a little more about that. Um, we established our emergency system. I'm sure you've all gotten a few calls on the, on the severe weather if you've signed up. That's a real good program. Uh, animal shelter euthanasia rate has dropped from 14% down to less than 10. So in the last six months. We implemented the PACE program, first one in the state of Arkansas, the property assessed clean energy program, which will hopefully eventually um, allow homeowners to use their property assess clean energy um, where you can borrow basically against your property tax and be able to weatherize your home, which only you will realize more savings in the first year than what they will increase in your property tax. That's a real good program. We haven't got it implemented for residential right now uh, with everything with the federal government. We've got to wait on them on some of the go ahead to do that. So that's some of the things we've completed in the last six months. Um, we're going to take uh, department head reports now, and they will give you presentations on what they have done and what they will be doing in the near future for 2015. So we'll start with Terry on the end. Terry Gully, transportation.
Yes. Any questions on that or okay sure. thank you uh, my name is jeremy pate i'm the development services director for the city of fayetteville um i want to give an update on the parking garage construction i'm the project manager for that project i've been working on it for a, almost a year now um, it's been several many years actually in uh, discussion and um, in october the city council approved a final contract to move forward with that project and to begin uh, to be in construction uh, the locations behind the Walmart Center at the intersection of uh, Spring and School Street, kind of across from the High Roller Soccery in that area. Um, after a few stops and starts in 2014 due to some design and funding challenges, I'm sure a lot of you read about or heard about, we were happy to get that project moving in October. Um, it consists of about a 240 space parking garage um, that will serve not only Walmart Center patrons, but um, anyone visiting the, the downtown uh, Dixon Street area that um, is looking for public parking. Um, it also has a three-story office space that will house the Walmart Center staff and also their backup house facility. One of their um, one of their parts of their expansion that they're going, undergoing currently, um, one of their needs for expansion was backup house facilities, essentially to stage a lot of their equipment and personnel, be able to have changing rooms. They use actually <coughs> um, the Star Theater, which is an existing theater. They use a lot of that for storage right now in order just to stage some of the larger shows that they're able to produce. And so this will allow for a lot of that area um, in the basement of this three-story building attached to the parking deck uh, for them to be able to expand and have even larger shows come to the Walmart Center for, for um, able citizens and visitors. Um, it'll also have um, two floors of office space uh, to replace the buildings that we removed. Um, the the wall, yeah, parking deck will sit on a site where their offices were <coughs> located. Um, and so it will replace that space and allow for some expansion as well. Um, the total construction cost for this project is a guaranteed maximum price by our contractor. Um, we have a construction manager, Baldwin and Shell, for this project. Um, it's not to exceed um, a little over $10.5 million. It's a one-year construction contract, so we'll be finished with the parking deck uh, in October of 2015. Um, in October of this year, we began excavation and demolition of that, that office building. Uh, we took out in excess of 1,269 dump truck loads of material out of the site in the excavation process, um, which was quite a, quite a sight to see. It took about six, um, six excavator loads to actually fill a dump truck and they were gone. So they were doing many, many of those a day. Um, we fortunately uh, did not uh, find any unexpected uh, rock, did not hit any rock, did not hit any bad soil. So we're, we're exactly where we need to be, knock on uh, wood of so some plastic of some sort, um, and we'll continue to do that. Um, we're now well into our second major task. Excavation is completed. Um, our second major task was the drilling of the piers. Um, this parking deck will sit on 44 individual piers that are um, drilled three feet into bedrock. Um, the bedrock's about 20 feet down um, below the excava excavated level. Um, as of the end of today, we've completed 30 of those 44, so we're well on our way, hopefully, to finish this up by Monday of next week. Uh, which would put us a few days ahead of schedule, actually. Um, and then we'll begin footing and foundation work um, by Christmas. Um, 
as I mentioned, they're about uh, average of about 20 feet of depth for each one of these piers. The average bedrock is deeper on one side than it is the other, so some are a little more, some are a little less. Um, but uh, things are going well there um, as well. Um, so barring any unexpected um, occurrences uh, within, uh, within this particular construction period, this is sort of, sort of the part that is the most unknown, underground. We did a lot of soil tests and a lot of borings before construction, but um, you sort of never know what you're going get, to get until you get into it, but so far, so good. Um, so we're on schedule to begin walls in January, so you start seeing steel being erected and actual construction coming out of the ground in January and February. And uh, it takes about uh, three to four months actually to pour the slabs. So between March and May, we'll be pouring the actual slabs um, of the of the four level parking garage um, with the completion date of October 2015. Any questions on that? Everybody good? Okay. Paul, you want to get your finance report? Good evening for those of you who may, may not know me. My name is Paul Becker. I'm the Chief Financial Officer of the City of Fayetteville. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the budget. The budget has been approved for 2015. Total operating budget is $145 million. Now that's up $9 million, uh, higher than last year, about 6%. Most of that increase is in the uh, capital project funds, especially in water and sewer, where we're undertaking several new projects. Uh, the capital portion uh, of the increase is $7 million. The operational portion about $2.6 million. So most of that increase for next year is in the, uh, in the capital programs. Now we have 22 separate funds in the city. Okay? There's just 22 separate buckets of funding that we're looking at thinking at, and each of them has a specific purpose. Uh, the two largest ones are the water and sewer fund, which is $39 million, and the general fund, which next year will be $38.1 million. Within the overall budget, about a third, 33% uh, of the total budget is for uh, personnel costs. The city is very labor intensive. Most of the things we do require the input of people to service uh, people for many, many uh, services that we offer. So the largest part of that is, in fact, uh, personnel costs. Uh, the other largest percent is about 15 percent of it is uh, the capital part of the program. So between those two, that's about uh, 50 percent of your budget right there. Now normally you'll hear me talk about the general fund. The reason I sit on the general fund is that's where any discretionary funds may be. That's also where uh, the most labor-intensive part of our budget is. General fund funds police, funds fire, uh, city services such as IT accounting, uh, the court system, uh, parks, things of that nature. Now that is very labor intensive. About 82% of the $38 million is spent on personnel costs. So that's where most of our uh, city services are concentrated uh, for you. Now that increase is about 2.6% up from last year. Uh, so we feel that that's pretty well in line. Uh, one thing I talk about quite frequently that I've quoted on is the sales tax revenue. Sales tax revenue funds 60% of the general fund, so you can see we're very sensitive to that. 60% of the, the uh, general fund's revenue is generated by sales tax. That's why you will see people concentrating at it, reported uh, on a monthly basis by me at the council and in the newspaper uh, to, to the citizens. So if you want a barometer of how we're doing uh, revenue-wise, that's that's a place that you'll, uh, you'll want to keep an eye on. Uh, overall, moving forward, as we get into the first quarter of this year, we'll bring out all the capital projects which aren't included currently in this year's budget. These are remaining projects from the current year. It'll total about $60 million. So our overall city budget, once adjusted, will be in the $200 million range. Uh, right now, revenues for this year, they're a little soft on the sales tax side. Uh, however, we do have some additional revenue over in building permits and franchise fees are up a bit, so I think we're going to balance out pretty well. And this year, we'll be pretty close to what expected in revenue, and I think the expenditures will be pretty close to what our expectations were. So I would say uh, right now, I feel very uh, very confident about next year's budget, next year's budget estimates, and the, uh, and the magnitude of next year, and we'll see what happens moving forward. Okay. Any questions for Paul on finances? Okay, please. Uh, 
because the mayor mentioned it, let me follow up. Um, Fritz, is that Neil back there? Who do all, who are we have? Okay, we have Neil Bilby, and we have Steve Odom, we have Fritz Giesler, and we have Doug Bankston back there. I just want to give a shout out for our media services crew. They uh, put this in all of the meetings, at least like 30 meetings a month uh, on the government channel. We also stream live uh, or stream uh, and have an archive of meetings. Uh, we load on the um, um, internet, on the internet you can go on there if there was a meeting from two years ago that you wanted to see again, just because you really like that meeting, you can go on our website and watch that, watch that meeting. Uh, they do an excellent job, as the mayor mentioned. Uh, Doug, you raise your hand, Fritz, raise your hand. Uh, uh, they just won an Emmy um, uh, for the city uh, for their work on the Recycle Something campaign. One thing Media Services does is we work on various campaigns for various uh, departments. We have a lot of really great uh, staff. I mean, I know the mayor praises the staff all the time in a lot of the various departments, and it truly is amazing what our staff do in-house every day uh, for the community. Uh, very, very smart minds, um, hard-working individuals. And uh, so they're uh, actually leading uh, the team with our recycling and uh, trash collection uh, crew on a Recycle Something campaign that's been very successful uh, uh, over the last really year and a half, two years now. And uh, had another uh, video um, a public service announcement on Recycle Something that just came out uh, in, the, in the last week. So um, we have on our website now, how many of you have gone to the city's website to get information? Yeah, good. Uh, how many of you went to the website five years ago? Or do you remember it? Uh, one thing that we did, um, before Mayor Jordan came into office, he pulled a, a large group of, from the community together and he, sat, and he sought some input. And one of the things that was a recurring thing was fix the website, make the website better, uh, put some information on the website. You know, um, and it was, um, it was good, but the, the, the reality was it was a very, very outdated, what's called a content management system. And I didn't know much about content management systems, uh, except, you know, in the past two years. Essentially, the lowdown on that is that it uh, is the engine, it is the uh, uh, performance uh, mechanism for websites. Um, I'll give another shout out for all of our employees, um, all of the departments. It truly, truly is amazing what these staff have done with this 20-year-old <laughs> system uh, and that website. They have squeezed everything out of it. And we have won awards on the website. We have um, uh, gotten a lot of kudos from people. People look at the website as it is today and they say, wow, that's one of the best websites that's out there. Uh, that's a lot of staff work on there. If you knew the underbelly or underneath what they were working with or how long it takes something to actually get online <laughs> once you post it, uh, how certain things might only be able to be posted if they're in alphabetical order. I mean, I mean it was, it's just a horribly difficult system to work with. Well, in the last year, the city council appropriated funds for a new content management system. I mean, it just even imagine what the internet was like or capabilities over the past 20 years, what's been done. So we're excited as a staff, and I know you're gonna be excited as a community, I think, with uh, the new website, which we plan, it should be uh, launching in March of next year. One thing that staff has been doing overall really particularly in the last two years is taking the website from where it was listening to the community and making it much more audience centered and as user friendly as possible but with these new content management systems what's amazing is the way they are set up you can have it if you're on your ipad if you're on your home computer that same system and it's in these like little boxes and things because it allows you if you have an iphone it just collapses all into one. And so it's readable with a lot of different uh, technologies that the people use. Those are the new systems. It's really great to have the city uh, in terms of uh, our website uh, become more modern, have more capabilities, um, have more audience-centered uh, aspects to it. We'll still have a, a, a lot of the main things that uh, people say that they want right there, say on the homepage. We are going to be wording them different. 
so, uh, so such as you know, government services, community, business, uh, but a, like a category, how do I? Because a lot of people think in those terms, like how do I get a permit? How do I, you know, in those terms, and then wording them in those ways so it hopefully will be uh, easier to find the information as well. We have a very strong social media program uh, at Fayetteville. Um, and our media services heads our uh, uh, YouTube channel. We have um, uh, you know, Twitter, we have Facebook. We have a lot of various ways uh, to meet the public. So we'll be able, I think, to do even more with that with this uh, when the new content management system uh, kicks in. So it's, uh, it's really exciting. Uh, there are things that we can also add in here that the public's asked for, like perhaps a, um, uh, a picture archive or uh, just so many things. It's truly unbelievable what we're going to be uh, able to do with the new website. Mayor also asked me to uh, uh, mention to you the uh, Fayetteville Alert uh, system that we have. Um, and I encourage you uh, to sign up for the Fayetteville Alert system. Uh, right now on our website is up at the, uh, the top, you just click on it and then you can get the emergency alerts, but it's not just for emergency alerts. You can sign up pretty much for anything. If you want to know, I want to know uh, the road and lane closures. I want to receive the quarterly newsletter. I want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, what are the events coming up? I want to receive by email uh, all copies of press releases. You know, you can sign up and you can select what information you would like to receive. Uh, it's been uh, very positive with the community. I think the one thing, uh, you know, when people call, when they sign up for road closures or lane closures, <laughs> we do usually get calls back and say, oh, I'm going to get off that one because they truly are amazed how many infrastructure projects go on in the city. Uh, they're not just city projects, but a lot of private uh, projects. Somebody might need to have a lane closed on their street just because they're having somebody come to cut trees. Uh, in that particular area. So there are a lot of lane closures uh, that, that happen. But I do encourage you, please do sign up for the alert system. Uh, it is something again, that the city council appropriated uh, uh, funds for. It is a way truly to, to know uh, what is going on in terms of, um, you know, particularly the emergencies. Um, information right to the T. Um, I know Chief uh, David Dayringer is our fire chief. I know as he always uh, seems to tell us, preach to us all the time, as you know, it's not just about knowing that an emergency is coming, but uh, to plan ahead uh, for emergencies. Um, and I want to uh, echo some of the things I think Sue may be talking about this as well. Uh, things I learned when working at the city, such as, you know, have uh, uh, Water or a, uh, um, a uh, what a um, a blanket or the things that you need, the packet that you need even in your car. You you don't know how many times you might get stranded somewhere. Um, so do think ahead, and there is that information on our website about that, how you can pre-plan for emergencies, what you need uh, in your home. Um, um, emergency uh, paperwork. When uh, Katrina came, uh, a lot of people. Really, when you're without your identification, uh, it's really hard to um, get your kids signed back up in school or get, get really started again. So there's also that knowing, having your identification, having it in a certain place where if you need to flee from your house, that you can grab it, grab it quickly. One thing I wanted to lead into with that is um, um, I learned about this actually from a uh, uh, firefighter, Jeremy Ashley. Uh, wife had uh, she's a teacher and she had brought me to uh, see these uh, kids uh, and they had come up with this idea and they had uh, information that you put on a card what are your medicines what are your medical conditions do you, or what are your allergies medical insurance a lot of this information and they said uh, put this on your refrigerator because the police and the firefighters ambulance they're trying to go to your refrigerator first so that they can best treat you. Because some people can just call, and then some, they may become incapacitated in some way, but they can't answer the questions maybe when the uh, uh, safety personnel come. Well, um, the Attorney General's office has sort of souped up uh, this 
type of thing. It's called the fall of life. And I have several over here and they have a magnet on, on the back. And you might know somebody that this would be helpful for. The, the police, the firefighters, emer emergency crews, they know to go look at that um, um, refrigerator and then see what this is. And imagine if they could take this out and then treat you in the, with the best care having that. So they're free, they're over the side. If you have a facility, say a, a hospital, a church, or uh, where you want to get several of these, you can literally, you can call, like I did, I called the Attorney General's office and I said, these are great. I'm going to keep some in my purse, I'm going to get them out to people. I dropped them off at my doctor's office. I said, y'all have to have these. Um, but you can call and say, I'd like a box of these. Uh, for my business and whatever, and you can you can have those. They truly uh, it d truly does help provide uh, help for information provided from you. Last, I want to mention a thing called My Fayetteville Services. Our GIS is <laughs> unbelievable. Have me have you anybody in here dealt with any of our uh, mapping systems or online capabilities? Super, isn't it? Uh, just truly amazing. It's not just about what ward do I live in and what, I mean, it truly, I mean, some collapse, maps collapse into other colla uh, maps, and you truly can find out so much information. And we have, um, the new website also have a feature where just like the uh, website we have today where, where you can just directly go to all the maps that we have. Um, but my Fayetteville services is something, it, it stemmed from uh, taking, um, both our neighborhood programs and community resource programs, linking it in with our mapping staff and coming up with this thing called My Fayetteville Services. What are those questions that the neighborhoods, that the residents and businesses, what do they want to know? And let's put it in a mapping form. It is so cool and I hope you go on there. If you go on the homepage, you'll see something called My Fayetteville Services. Click on that and they'll just have you uh, press enter to go into it. Well. Once you're in there, you can, up in the search feature, you can put in your address or any address, or you can just go to the map and click on a destination. Once you do that, there's gonna, you're going to be able to know what ward that house is in, if it's in a pl floodplain or not, who are the elected officials for that area, how is it zoned, um, what are the closest schools, where would, if you had a child uh, and you bought that house, where would they go to school? Um, you, can find, you, can, you can see, it'll show up, it'll show you what the closest trails are, and then you hit this little feature in it, and then it'll show you the map to get to the trailhead to get on that trail. It'll do the same thing for parks. What are the closest parks to where that uh, location is? Where's the, closest, where's the police station from there? What's the closest fire department? from there. So there's a lot of really great information on there at your fingertips. So if you say, wow, here's a residence, I need to know who the city council member is for that house, uh, and I want to know if it's zoned a particular way, go on my Fayetteville services and within 60 seconds you'll be able to answer those questions. So. Thank you. Any questions for Lynch Lee on this? Yes. We actually, we, yeah, we have a, and Terry could really go into that uh, probably best, uh, better than me, but we have an amazing pilot that's down on Dixon Street. Where, where are you talking about? Glass recycling. Well, I mean, yeah. And we, we recycle glass. glass. That we'd like to recycle. Is there somewhere where we can take it? Yes, we've got two recycling drop-off centers. One's located on North Street between uh, Greg and Leverett. Oh, okay. yeah. There's one there, they take glass amongst oh, okay. all kinds of other things. And then there's also one down at our public works area down off Happy Hollow and 15th Street. There's another recycling drop off there. Oh, you can do okay. that. And one of the things yeah. we're doing with our grass re glass recycling program is we started one, well, it's almost two years ago now on Dixon Street with some of the businesses. It was a volunteer thing. Uh, we went from collecting a quarter ton of glass a week with about six or eight businesses to now we collect over four times a week and uh, we've expanded that even out around some of the restaurants out towards the mall area and in between so we're continuing to do that we'll, we'll look to continue
continue to expand that even more in the future. But that's where you can, you know, if you've got some you want to just take in, those are the two locations. Yeah, if you have large. Also in your residential, I mean, that's what, you know, we do our TN, we do our glass and our residential, uh, and it takes it. One thing about the Dixon Street one, uh, I'll add on to that, um, uh, you know, uh, the bars, the restaurants, putting all that glass that we used to go like into a landfill. Now with this particular program, a uh, massive amount of glass they're getting. Uh, and then having that sent off uh, and Corning turns it into uh, insulation. And I believe it's like a um, hundred, a hundred, no, um, what is it, like 10 bottles uh, make up like two cavities worth of insulation. And what they do, it goes back into Habitat for Humanity to help house, uh, I mean, to help keep uh, houses warm uh, for those who need it. So it's really, you know, as I told people, I said, you know, if you drink something out of a bottle down on Dixon Street, you're helping keep somebody's uh, house warm this winter. Well, glass is mostly recycled. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and one more quick question about, uh, you mentioned about lakes closures and other Oh, please, yes. Uh, in fact, in the future, we'll be calling it reported concern. But right now, um, it's over to the left-hand side, what's in qu called quick links. And we just love it when people do that because it's so important that we hear from you because we can't just go and find every pothole, you know. And, you know. Um, uh, and it's, um, how do we word it? Um, uh, oh, request for services is the wording that we have on right now. And when you go into it, I mean, it's even something like, oh, I can't stand the barking dog next door. <laughs> you know, it's even, I'm gonna report a barking dog or a pothole or there's a limb down on a trail or something. Well, there's one particular bad spot also, garlic and pickle. Yeah. Okay. Really. And that's why we have town hall meetings, because Terry just wrote that down. <laughs> Consider a report. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's in. It's submitted. And I go there early, early in the morning. I know where it's at, but I'm like, I can't get that spot. So this is on Sycamore, it's on Sycamore. near Garland. It's right after you turn off Garland. Okay. It's on the um, east end. Yeah. All right. Okay. We'll take care of it yeah. tomorrow. Need to expand the list. More choices. Just the other. Yeah, other. Other, well, other yeah, choices. It's a limited yeah. list. If you just say, if it doesn't fit there, then pick yeah. other. But I okay. would say, if you have them, pick other. It's a good you idea. Require them to put in the description. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. Especially locations. And well, there's the a description that will yeah. follow this. This is long. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have used the website though. You, it's vastly improved. For, I mean, it's a lot. Is it easier? Are you find? I like it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully you really love it in March. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you really love it in March. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Chris, you want to go ahead and give your report? Up? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. We have this room right. about 8.30. I just wanted so we can go ahead. Uh, 
I'm, uh, I'm Chris Brown, I'm the city engineer. I'm going to talk about the transportation bond program. Um, some of these projects I'll repeat it. I'll be repeating. Uh, the mayor stole all my good stuff, so uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, you give it more detail. Chris. Mayor loves to talk about infrastructure. We all know that. So the um, uh, bond program is about $65.9 million that was approved by voters in 2006. Uh, we've leveraged that money with partnerships with the highway department and federal aid funding uh, to over $100 million of projects that uh, we've done or, or have in progress. Uh, several projects we've completed. Uh, Mount Comfort Road is one that, uh, that is, was done two or three years ago. The Roundabout near Washington Regional, hopefully you guys have all had a chance to go through that. It's kind of fun. Um, and then the, the Fayetteville Flyover, as the mayor mentioned, and that was a project that, uh, again, we were able to get federal aid funding for. It's about a $6 million construction project, and 80% of that was federal aid. So a small amount of the bond program was able to do a very large project. Um, under construction right now, we have Van Ash Drive, the extension of Van Ash to create a better connection between Garland Avenue and Gregg Avenue. Uh, that uh, will be completed by mid next year. Uh, a couple of highway department jobs, again, we've partnered with them on, on several of these projects and paid part of the cost of the project. Uh, highway 16 East, uh, Happy Hollow to Stonebridge is under construction to be completed in the spring. And then Razorback Road on the university campus up to Leroy Pond uh, is under construction as well. Um, 2015, we have several projects planned for construction. The historic bridges on Maple and Lafayette uh, that's a federal aid project that's taken us a while to get through the federal aid process as it normally does, uh, but uh, that's a project we'll, uh, by mid-2015, we'll have under construction, and those, those bridges will be um, improved, cleaned up, repaired, and uh, will look much better, uh, but will retain their historic character. Um, Another project is the intersection of Old Wire and Mission. We'll be signalizing that intersection and, and making some improvements there. As the mayor mentioned, Zion Road to Crossover Road is another project that will uh, have, uh, widen, be widened, have some turn lanes, sidewalks, and bike lanes on, on that to kind of finish the job, what we did there in front of Lowe's several years ago. Um, and again, as the mayor mentioned, right outside our door here, uh, the Rupal Road extension is planned for next year uh, that will extend from Owl Creek South down to Highway 62 to, to MOK. Uh, that project will, will begin next year. We also are looking at widening the segment out here, the existing segment, um, to four lanes up to Weddington. Um, and lastly, construction next year on campus again, uh, Maple Street between Garland and Razorback. So that, uh, that segment of Highway 112 Again, we're partnering with the highway department with federal aid funding. Uh, we also have some uh, design projects that are, uh, will continue to move forward in 2015. Um, Old Wire Road, uh, designed really from Mission all the way to Stanton. Uh, we've got a couple of phases of that project that will occur um, in, the, in the coming years, but the design of that will begin next year. Um, Rupal Road, north of here at Mount Comfort Road, that intersection, if you guys have been through that, you know it's kind of a, uh, I call it substandard, it's really just kind of a strange intersection. Um, Y'all have, have seen that, I'm sure. Um, it, nobody knows who's supposed to go where or, or anything. Um, but anyway, that's a, that's a federal aid project as well, so we're designing on it. It's probably going to be 2016 before we can get to construction on it, again because of the federal aid and the time frame. Um, and then lastly, uh, College Avenue, we're going to be looking at extending the sidewalk project that we, uh, we did in the downtown area. So north from Maple Avenue all the way to Sycamore, uh, working on the design next year uh, for construction in 2016. So uh, that's going to be a very, very big project, uh, one that we get a lot of requests for to extend that project. So really looking forward to moving forward with it. And lastly, uh, these aren't bond pr projects, but uh, the highway department, um, if you, you guys haven't heard, uh, I'm not going to go through all the interchange projects that are going to be constructed, but it's all of them. They're going to be working on every single one of them in the city um, in the next two to three years. Uh, 
investing about uh, about 110 million is what their estimate is right now uh, for the major interchange and, and widening projects. Um, ultimately, it's it's more than that. If we look region wide, uh, the plan is to uh, be to six lanes from the MLK interchange all the way to Bentonville. So, uh, six lanes with all improved interchanges over the next about 10 years. So, uh, definitely an investment that we're looking forward to. That's all I have. We're going to build the infrastructure. Do you have any questions, Chris, on any of the road projects? Okay. Sue, so what do you have for us? Can you do it? Yeah, sure. Because I can't sit and talk. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out. My name is Sue Butler, and I'm from the Fairfield Fire Marshal's Office. The Fairfield Fire Department. Um, I have a question on the question for you. I don't get up and leave. Actually, it's not very personal at all. What I want to know is, is this how you work? What is this muscle on? Bring them in. Well, with the Chico off when you're in small, okay? And when you, sometimes they're very sensitive, okay? But what we want to make sure is you do have a working smoke alarm, um, because that's a very important warning system that you have. It's not a warning system to go look for your car keys or your phone or anything like that. It's a warning system for you to get out, okay? And everybody should, tonight, homework tonight, okay? And I'm going to know if you didn't do it, all right? <laughs> is test your smoke alarm. So everybody in sequence, when you get home, hit that button. No, and it's very simple, actually, to, to, to test, okay? You put a, uh, you take a broomstick, and if you don't have a ladder, which most people don't use the ladder, they'll usually use the chair, but I prefer you use this, you know, a broomstick, and just hold that test button outside of it, okay? There's a test button on every kind of smoke alarm, and hold it down until it goes off. Now, if you have interconnected ones, then you're going to hear it throughout the whole house, all right? And that's very important. If you hear this, that, who has kids here, too? Okay. I, yeah, I met, you said you had kids, too. So, the second thing is making sure you can get out of the house, okay? Um, two ways out of every room. Fire escape plan is very important, okay? Um, who has gas appliances in here? You guys, don't be afraid. It's okay. I don't it's know. Okay. What's it's very not important? A trick question. <laughs> it's not a trick question. It's, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's I know I'm asking a lot, but you know, um, it's very important to invest in a CO detector or a carbon monoxide detector. Okay. Uh, this time of year, the gas is going, the furnace is going, the the uh, fireplace is going. We got all kinds of candles burning, and um, we have CO in our air right now to process a little bit. Humans can process a little bit, but it's when it's too much that it starts to take the oxygen out of our lungs and we just kind of slowly, it's not like somebody's choking you, but it just slowly goes out. And uh, that could be caused by a leak, too much CO in the air in your home. You know, once in a while you have to air it out a little bit. I know it's hard to do at 20 degrees outside, which we haven't hit yet. Okay? Well, maybe we have, I don't know. It's, it's still early. Um, but check that, that's, that's also, it, it, they cost from $7 up to 75, okay? And they're worth getting if you have gas appliances. And test them monthly, okay? Like you would your smoke alarm, they have a different sound that goes off. Some of them even talk. And if, you, if it does go off, guys, don't go look for it, okay? No, it's okay, it, it's automatic. Everybody wants to go look for it. You can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't taste it, you can't touch it, you know, nothing. No sight or anything. So just get out of the house, call 911, call the fire department, we'll come out. We have tools to tell if you have a leak. Um, we'll air out the place. Very important. Don't go looking for it because you won't find it and you might collapse. We've had that happen. So um, too much in the air. Put in your budget for next year, or at least now, if you can, get your furnace checked and your fireplace checked, okay? It's worth it, annually if you can. Now, 
Because it is the season, we do a lot of heating right now, alternative heating, such as portable space heaters. Um, sometimes we do the fireplace, sometimes we have the wood burning stove. It's very important that you take caution with that. Portable space heaters uh, come in electric form, kerosene form, which I recommend for only outside. That's all. That's real old fashioned. Actually, if you can't sell it, <laughs> sell your kerosene because you'll, you'll get more money for it on eBay, okay? And you will for the part of having it at home. It's they're just very dangerous, and um, as as you know. Uh, a lot of times you see them outdoors in big warehouses, they'll use them because there's more air to out there. But if you have one in your home, I recommend you get an electric one. Okay? You, if you have to have one, get one now where they have a shut off valve that falls off, falls over, or that gets knocked over, it shuts off automatically. Very important. If you have the ones that have the, the uh, portable space heater that have those little coils, okay, well, sell that on eBay too because uh, those things get knocked over and they're hot. So immediately they start burning the, the rug. Don't leave the room with kids in the, in the room with the portable space heater. That's the first thing they go for. And we've had that in the past, not here, but up in uh, Rogers area, that there was five kids in the room and that was their heating source with the portable space heater. And they played with it and it caught up the carpet on fire. Um, Pretty soon, the part of the living room was on fire. They got out, but they were still playing with it, and that's that. That was that experience. So, please be cautious. Three feet clearance all around it and above it. Don't use it to warm up the gloves or anything like that. Okay. Um, I have all kinds of brochures and information over there. Uh, our fire prevention week was, uh, you know, test your smoke alarm. So that I already talked to you about that. Here's information on that, doing it monthly, set your you know, number on your favorite, on your calendar, your favorite number between one and 28, mark it on your calendar for the next year, and test your smoke alarm. This is a great brochure on carbon monoxide. It's a little lengthy, but it's lots of information in it, okay? I actually read these, believe it or not, I don't just give them out. So. Um, eat it, exit drills in the home, no two ways out of every room, practice that. Especially when you have a lot of company over this time of year, you know, and you have a fire. They're not going to know where to go, okay, so you have to explain that. And fire safety holidays, I got a great brochure over there about, uh, who uses Christmas trees and lights and decorative stuff, you know, who uses outdoor uh, lights or indoor lights outside, anybody? I hope not, because that, that's a hazard too. No more than three on a string, okay. Strung up. If you have to use a extension cord, we prefer you to use the uh, strip cord, you know, with the surge protector. Good quality one, not the dollar store version. Um, makes a difference. These are little steps you can take before. Check your lights before you put them on the Christmas tree and decorations. And you know those beautiful candle holders that are decorated around and put your nice pretty candle in there? Don't. I know that's where it's for, unless you have protection for that candle. Um, we get busy, those candles burn down. Uh, chances are you do not have a flame retardant decoration, okay, um, because it costs you a fortune. So they don't even sell them practically. Um, so, you know, you have to be careful with candles. I also have a brochure on that too. Candle with care. Oh, that's, that's another one. Um, we at the fire department, you know, we don't mind coming to your house and putting out your fire. We just want you to be able to get out and not have the fire, really. You know, uh, we're there, we're ready. See, they're going right now. You got to call. Um, but it, it's important. What I try to do is prevent, okay? I want you to take a few steps and just prevent fires. Um, but they're always ready to go if you have one. But, you know, so have a good holiday, safe holiday. Um, does anybody have, oh, I also have some handouts there, all kinds of goodies and stuff. Um, anybody have any questions? Do you see fire hazard on the increase or do you see it? <coughs> well, it's, it's always increased in the beginning of, of a winter and beginning of summertime, things like that where there's, you know, beginning of the year. 
we have the heater go and starts up, kicks up. Uh, the smoke alarms go off because they've been sitting there and the heater hits that and so they'll go off and think, what the heck is this? You know? But um, uh, it, it varies, you know, it just, it just depends. I'm, I'm hoping to get more people educated on it so that they know to take extra steps. If you're testing your smoke alarm monthly, at least you know you have a warning system. So we recommend you change the battery every six months, like in November when we change the time. That's a good time to change the battery. If you're testing it monthly, chances are you know that it's working. If you hear a chirp, which I hope you don't, I hope you change your battery before that, um, that chirp means to change the battery. It's a little bit of juice left in that battery. Telling you, hey, help, I'm, I need to be changed, you know. So it's very important. You know, it, it, just, it just varies. Uh, it's it's kind of unpredictable. That's the thing about fire, it is unpredictable. Make sure, you know, if you have younger kids around, or especially this time of year when you have all the kids and the family's talking and all the kids are running around. They're sitting there playing with the, the candles and the, the lighter and they're playing around the fireplace. You gotta be careful because they don't know how hot, how dangerous the fire is. So, any other questions? Great question. Yes, sir. Does the city have a fire that I take in to every school, uh, every elementary, and we go through, you know, kindergarten through third grade, um, sometimes fourth and fifth. And I talk to them about that, and we have school fire marshals that are assigned that principals pick. Um, I know what program you're talking about, Springdale. Yeah, I'm, I'm, think, I'm thinking about stealing that idea from them. Well, and I do have it on the web page where you can get, like, our National Fire Prevention Association. It does all the codes for all fire and, and electrical and fire alarms. And they have a sparky.com or sparky.org, I'm sorry, page that kids can, you can get a, gra a little floor plan and teaches you how to do it. But yes, sir, do you have a floor plan? <laughs> you know how to get out? You, know? you have two ways out? Yeah, that's yeah. Well, that, that's what one thing the fire department did learn was that you go through the kids because they'll go home and they'll whine and yell at the mom and dad, hey, you got to do this, fireman says, you know. So that's what we're hoping. And it's been, a, you know, but yes, yes, I go in every school. I get that we have school fire marshals that also are signed by the principal from every school, and I give them a special program. And uh, they get to participate in the fire drills. So. Um, and every year it's a different kid and stuff. So. Somebody had a question over here? Did somebody have their hand up? Anybody no, because we, Sue, I, we got this room to about 8.30 and what I need, Connie, your report, and we'll take everybody. some questions tonight. And then we, we'll go back and we'll take some more questions later. Okay. No problem, sorry. No, it's okay. Good evening, I'm Connie Edmondson. I'm Parks and Recreation. I'm very proud to be here. I think our city is just an awesome place to live with a lovely family and to play and to work. And with that said, it's kids to see you. And as you all know, have you all been down to like the field down the Any idea how many hours it takes to go like that? A whole bunch, that's right. Long time. <laughs> We put up 400,000 volts, pretty close to the light. As the guy said, they're all LED lights, so we are saving energy with them. So very proud of that display. Please take your families down there. Uh, invite your friends. Oh, invite your friends and um, people from around other states and around the area to come down and, want, and look at the display. We, we, we did it for you. The city of Fayetteville thinks it's very important to provide that for you. So, uh, anyhow, I'm going to visit with you a little bit about the regional park. The regional park is located off of Cato Springs Road, which is kind of on the southwest side of our city. 
You could go off on Cato Springs Road and turn down Judge Cummings Road. A little light on there. Ah, right there. That gets you to the regional park. We have 200 acres right here for the regional park. And then I'm going to show you another map a little bit later where we have Mount Kessler, which is over here, and another 375 acres. So we have about 600 acres in all there for you to enjoy. The regional park is something that came up from our master plan in the year 2000. One thing that our citizens wanted was one place to recreate. They were tired of running all over the city, uh, taking their child to play baseball or softball or soccer. They wanted everything in one area. So that's what we did. We have designed a park that has everything in one area. Um, just this last spring, a, the A&P Commission uh, had a bond that uh, you all voted on, thank you very much, and which provides $3.5 million for our park. Our city has about 4.5, so we have about an $8 million project to do phase one. Of the, of the park. Uh, the park's going to consist of, at the very top, is a great lawn, in which is kind of an area that you gather. There'll be an amphitheater in there. Uh, there'll be the park's office someday, uh, a restroom pavilion, a playground area, and then it leads to our soccer fields. There's eight soccer fields. Currently, our soccer program is held at Lewis at Soccer Complex, which is across from Asbel Elementary School. And we have a, a, a lease agreement with the University of Arkansas that expires July the 31st, 2018. So that's one reason why we needed to get a place for 1,500 kids to play soccer. So we'll be moving that out there. Uh, this will also comprise of eight baseball fields. We have around 900. 900 plus children playing baseball, and then a, a girls softball complex, which comprises about oh, a good 300 kids. Then there'll be a trailhead over here, a pavilion, and a restroom so that can lead you on up to Mount Kessler to enjoy those many trails. On the southern edge of our park down here, we'll, be, we'll, have, a, we'll have tennis um, courts, sand volleyball courts and basketball courts will be all comprised down there. So that'll be its own complex. And over here, we'll have our maintenance complex. Um, so that's kind of the whole picture. It's about close to, right now it's estimated around $28 million to totally build it out. But we're on an $8 million roundabout phase one. So phase one, what it will do, it's outlined in green. It'll start on the Great Lawn. We'll build six of the soccer fields. We'll start on the baseball complex, three to four fields of that to start us off with concession stands and restrooms and everything else. It'll also build the road through. We'll have a road that comes up through there. And eventually our trail system will hook in and it will be along the border and, and hook into Mount Kessler. This is Mount Kessler that I'm talking about. And right now, you all can park over here. We have parking over in this area. And then when there's parking on up this area. Um, we do have the, the tower, the water towers up there is part of this complex. So very excited for this to be going. It is out to bid right now. Bids are due in January. We'll take uh, the contract to city council in February. And then in March, we hope to break ground on it. So we're very, very excited over that. 600 acres. Yes, over 600 acres. So the regional park is, is going to be awesome. Hopefully we're bringing a lot of uh, tournaments and, and uh, just provide our families with, and citizens with a great place to go recreate, to be healthy and be active. Of course, I can't come before anybody without saying we need volunteers in our park. We have several different programs. We have Adopt-a-Park, Adopt-a-Trail program, and just a pl we have a park that's perfect for anybody to go help us uh, remove invasive plants or to help clean up trails or to help paint. Many projects going on. We also have a few boards that you may serve on, the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, 
the Urban Forestry Advisory Board. Uh, we had the Yvonne Richardson Community Center Board. And um, then we had numerous, our soccer boards, softball boards. We had boards, citizens that help us organize those events too. But uh, it brings in a lot of money to our city to have volunteers to help us to do the work. We couldn't do it. We couldn't manage the 4,200 acres without your help. So anytime you're interested in having a service project, please give us a call and we'll find a fun project for you. And last but not least, there's many ways to connect with us through Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Con. Okay, now we're just going to take some general questions from the public. All right. Oh, please come to the microphone and introduce yourself, and we'll answer what we can. What we don't know tonight, we'll get back to you on. Okay, fair enough. Who'd like to start? Ms. Campbell, I'm sure you would like to. Would you like to start tonight? Well, I, I want to appreciate the mayor and to having a town hall meeting like this, <coughs> and, and all of you guys did a great job of presentations. Uh, of the different aspects of Fayetteville, from parks to, to websites to uh, construction projects. Uh, a very good job. And, and uh, th this, this is the kind of thing uh, I think Fayetteville needs, is, is this kind of interaction, this kind of information. You know, I wish more people um, would take advantage of this because, uh, you know, this is, this is what a city is supposed to do. Communicate just like you guys have, and I think that's awesome. And, uh, you know, all of us have been through uh, kind of a, a heavy-duty uh, four or five months, you know, and the city's, uh, it, this, this divisive issue has kind of been intense for everybody. And uh, it's time, uh, I believe, and, and we sent the mayor uh, a, a letter today in the city council and just asked that maybe, you know, the talk, uh, you know, uh, Matthew Petty's put forth uh, a proposal, Kit, Kit Williams has put forth a proposal for more ordinances. and. What we're asking is to give everybody a break. Give, give the citizens of, of, of Fayetteville a rest. It's time to enjoy the holidays, not talk about more ordinances. And uh, what we're asking the mayor and, and, and the city council to do is next year, let's sit down and talk, not necessarily about an ordinance, but about issues and, and start there. I think that's where it should have started a long time ago anyway. One reason it became a hotly contested issue is because there wasn't talk previous to the idea of ordinances. So um, um, I just asked you, Mr. Mayor, would you consider that? Well, I tell you what I will do. Would y'all like to meet with me? Everybody fair enough? You meet with me? Yes. We'll meet Mr. Campbell. All right. We'll set up a time. Thank you very much. And I'll be glad to meet with you. I want to hear from everybody. I know this, I know everybody's tired right now. Yes. I'm tired. But I think that, you know, reasonable people always find reasonable ways, I believe. We'll sit down, we'll talk, and we'll, I'll see what concerns that you have, and then we'll see what can be worked out. Okay? I think that's a good thing. I don't mind I it appreciate all. that. Talk is good. Talk is first. We, before we start getting into negotiating absolutely. laws. Absolutely. I'm good with that. Anytime you all want to sit down with the mayor and talk to me, my door is open. I mean that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. What else do we have? Yes, Doctor. I have a question for Connie. When, is, when will the first stage of the regional park be completed, your estimated? It's 14 to 16 months okay. to complete phase yeah. one, which will start in March. Okay. Oh, that's just phase one. Yes, I understand that. Um, could you um, comment on where you are with trails, uh, particularly on some of them that are not connected? How are, what are, I, I, you didn't say anything about what's the state of the trails. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't talk about trails tonight, oh, uh, but certainly can. Uh, did you have one in particular for, for? No, I just, we have a lot of trails that just kind of just sure. are short little ones and uh, just like how are we moving along to connecting some of them now my preface is on some of the ones on west side but right. there are a lot of the little short ones that it's like 
are we going to start making a plan forward to start connecting them so that these yes. little neighborhoods where have the short little ones, you can start connecting the neighborhoods. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, uh, this coming year, um, we're focusing for the most part on um, kind of the southwest part of the city, connecting the, the Town Branch Trail and the Jalagi Trail, uh, completing a loop through the south part of town uh, to connect up some of those pieces of the trail. Uh, we also are working on design right now for the, the Cato Springs Branch Trail, which runs really from Cato Springs out to the regional park. Um, all of those projects that I mentioned, the, the Walton Family Foundation, uh, they really approached us and they said, what, what other trails would you like to do and how can we help? And so they're helping us with those. Um, we'll be providing 50% of the funding for those projects. Um, we also, looking out on, on this side of town, when we talk about Rupel Road, um, it will have a 12-foot wide trail on the west side of Rupel from one end to the other. So we'll be constructing it and we'll be building it as part of the road, uh, but it will be a trail connection. Um, Clabber Creek Trail, which is just north of here, is a piece that uh, we would have had built already, um, but the, the uh, permitting in the Corps of Engineers has been difficult through that segment between Salem and uh, Rupel. It's one that, um, again, we, we would have had done by now. We're all ready to go as soon as we can get the permit. We've got the funding in place. We've actually got a, a grant from the highway department to build a, a bridge across Claver Creek along Salem. Uh, so that's a connection that we certainly want to make. Um, we're looking at extending Shiloh Trail, which runs along the west side of 540, uh, really from, from Sam's Club all the way down to MLK. Uh, that's one over the next two to three years we'll want to make that connection. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're working, you know, th two to three miles every year, more in some cases. Uh, that connection, um, yeah, that one is probably a little further out. We need to do the, the, uh, uh, the Hamstring Creek Trail is one also. Um, now, when we build Rupel, I mentioned Rupel up uh, north of here uh, near Mount Comfort. When we build that, when we put the bridge in there, we'll accommodate for a trail underneath there. Um, but... Yeah, we've got you know a long-term plan of, of 100 miles of trail, so we've still got a long way to go, but uh, it's budgeted every single year. We've got money coming in every year, and it's just a matter of, of trying to hit those priorities and making those connections. That's something that the mayor, when he came in, he said, you know, let's not go build it where it's easy just because we have the land or because it's an easy project to do. Let's actually make some connections. And um, it takes a while because um, you know, we don't have a lot of funding, but uh, we're working on all of those. And the connectivity is important to me. That you just don't build peace trail here. It's like sidewalks. When you build sidewalks, you need to you need to hook them up. And I mean, we, when I came into office, we'd have a piece of sidewalk maybe as far as from here to the end of the room, and then bare ground, then another one hook up again. And I said, we got to make connectivity. We got to make connectivity with the trails. We'll have. Now help me out here, Chris. 28 miles of trails on the ground by the end of this year. I wish we had Matt almost here. He could have. Almost. I just wasn't thinking we could have had a whole presentation on trails. Uh, but I'm big on that trail building and sidewalks. We triple sidewalk funding in this city. So, and we're going. We're starting in the schools, and we're going to do half mile radiuses around these schools where every child can walk safely to school. Because when I first came into office, I heard. We don't have the proper infrastructure. We don't have enough roads. We don't have enough sidewalks. We don't, you know, everybody wanted trails. And what I tried to do is I got so much coming in and I got so much going out and I got to keep us between the road ditches. I can't overspend. And, and then there's services that need to be done. And it's a constant thing of, I'm, Paul and I, we, we talk about <coughs> money almost every day. I mean, it's just part of it. You got to be a good money manager or, and so I can't do everything at one time, but we do what we can with what we have. Okay? We appreciate your diligence on We've been able to submit some balanced budgets the last two or three years, and I'm telling you, in this day and time, that is not easy to do. Okay. What other question do have? I got off on a little thing there. Yes. All right. Come on. Ask you, do you have the uh, amount that was spent on the special election? Special election, I can 
you come to the mic, please? Because we're filming. Yeah. <laughs> we want to get you okay. all on record. Okay. Um, on the uh, <clears throat> fuel costs for the city, we all know that uh, fuel costs have been plunging lately. And uh, I was wondering, one, were you already aware of uh, some of this trend and had already estimated your fuel costs based upon the decline in in that in that area. We estimated the fuel costs to be around. Uh, we keep around three dollars and thirty cents a gallon. Now, one of our challenges is not only the cost of fuel itself, but the usage costs. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the fire department answering more calls and uh, the police department's uh, volume. Uh, coverage is up too, so the usage is up and it kind of offsets, but we kept it about $3.30. I was kind of uncomfortable with go too much mm -hmm. under this. You never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. and, as you're aware, and as we're all aware, things that are happening in the Middle East are certainly out of our control. We don't know right. what's going to happen with fuel. We certainly hope that, uh, that we do have decreases and keep the decreases, but uh, we're not really comfortable right now of decreasing that too much. Yeah, right. I just was wondering about, you know, that process. But if you estimated it at 3.30, even though you're talking about calls being right. up, you could be realizing some savings a little we bit could. from that. Nope. Do you have any idea what it might, what it could possibly be? Have you tried to, to think that out? Oh, I would guess we might look in the $100,000 range okay. or so. However, it, as I say, our usage continues to go up as the community expands. Uh, as we get more calls, the usage goes up, so we have to be very, very careful with that balance mm -hmm. of what is our call volume going to be, what is our, what are our expenditures for fuel going to be as far as extra gallons in well, usage. God willing, I won't call the police this year. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope, I hope to contribute, or the fire department. I just have one quick question for you, Mr. Mayor. Have you spoken to Kit Williams about his proposal or a new order? I have not. I got that proposal. Uh, today, okay, and I have not really thoroughly um, looked it over. Same thing with Council Member Petty's that came in. I think they came in Thursday afternoon. Is that is that correct, Blake? I don't want to put you on the spot here, uh, but I think they came in Thursday afternoon, and I got a copy of that today. I've looked at his resolution, and I, I'm reading Kit's, but it was like 10 pages, and I was a little bit mm -hmm. strapped for time getting here and. I had several meetings today. Yeah. But I was opposed to the ordinance that the all uh -huh. passed. My name's Ed Schimberg, by the sure. way. So I wrote a couple uh, Yeah, of I'm papers. sorry. I should but have. Uh, <clears throat> I am not a bigot, OK? Uh, uh, I'm almost 66 years old. I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. So I've had a lot of social interactions with homosexuals over the years, lived in Dallas, lived in various places. So you know, I'm not homophobic, so I don't worry about any of that part of it. Uh, but one thing that surprised me, because I really wasn't, I moved back up here, I went to school here earlier in the 85 to 88, then I moved back up here last year in November. I lived down in El Dorado, Arkansas for a long time. Now, but I say that to say this, I was really surprised that you moved that ordinance that was passed so fast without ever getting a smidgen, to use the president's word, a smidgen of evidence uh, as to whether there really was in legal fact, discrimination going on or widespread discrimination going on against any group, be it the homosexual, transgender group or any group, and no comp, I mean, no real legal evidence in my view as to <coughs> how that ordinance impacted the constitutional rights which protect each and every one of us, okay? Because that was one of our main concerns. Anyway, I just and I hope when we talk about this, 
all this stuff is going to get thoroughly fleshed out. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. But the, the 119 ordinance now has been voted on by the people and has yeah. been repealed. Now, that does not mean, I, I want everybody to understand this, that does not mean a council member cannot bring another ordinance forward. They have that right as mm -hmm. legislative branch yeah. of this city. I okay. figured they would. So. Well, I, I didn't know one way or the other, but it has occurred, and the city attorney has written one up, and I haven't gotten through all of that. Okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Cobb. I know everybody by name tonight. <laughs> Michael Collins. Uh, in San Diego, we had walkover bridges so we could get over the interstate. And yeah. one of the things that really worries me, especially in Weddington, where I live there, uh, you're driving on the ice, and on the side of the bridge, it's packed up at an angle, yeah. and people are walking to get their bare necessities across this doggone bridge from the west side uh, on the east side over to the Walmart and all the infrastructure that's built on the uh, west. And it really concerns me, is there anything, uh, and, and speaking of the Weddington Corridor also, uh, maybe if we punch Shiloh through or Salem as a street, that might relieve a lot of the problems in that intersection that we have. With, I mean, we're, we're dealing with roundabouts, and you know, I think a clover leaf is in order, or order if we remain that high capacity in that intersection. As you all know, that's one of the biggest problems that we've got in the area as far as traffic goes, but is there plans to put walking bridges and things there is. The, like there is with the trails? It's going to be a, I'm sorry. Thank I'm you very yeah, much. I'm, I'm kind of interested in stuff. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, that um, walkway is really not even, was not even intended to be a sidewalk in the first right. place. Um, it's not wide enough, it, it, but if people walk it out of necessity, you can see the trails that, that people have made across there. So there's an obvious need for a better pedestrian access. Uh, the highway department, as I mentioned, that's one of the, the, the interchanges that they are going to work on. They'll be uh, totally rebuilding those bridges. Um, and uh, from, a, from a vehicular standpoint, uh, the main thing that's going to happen is if you are eastbound from the west side of Fayetteville, rather than turning left to get on to the highway, you'll uh, be in the right lane and loop under the highway. That's called a loop ramp. Um, so they're, they're, they're planning to construct that. Now what the city has asked for um, is instead of uh, bike lanes or a sidewalk on both sides, we want to take all of that space, put it in a, in a wide 12 to 16 foot wide uh, pedestrian and bicycle path on the north side of the road. Uh, again, that's what we've requested something we've still got to work through with the highway department and um, there, there's going to be some resistance there. We've got some work to do with them. Um, but we do feel like it is very important. It, again, there's an obvious need. Um, and so that, that's what we're looking at, what we're asking them for over the bridge. And to continue that all the way on the north side of Weddington, uh, most likely what, what we're going to see with that particular project is Weddington widened all the way to Salem to, to six lanes, three lanes in each direction. Um, so we'll be, be asking for a, a, a trail on the north side <laughs> of Weddington when they do that widening. So it's an extensive project. It's a $20 million project, just that interchange. Um, and so what we've encouraged the highway department is you're spending $20 million. Let's do it right for all the users that are out there. And um, we're we're optimistic, but there's still some work to be done to, to get that uh, in place. And keep in mind that Rupert Road is so important because on the west side of town, it's going to, where the smokehouse is, it's going to go straight to uh, uh, Mount Comfort. And that's going to be huge. I don't have enough money to go around. And, and that's going to be constructed of a four lane boulevarded road with 10 feet of green space and a sidewalk, five foot sidewalk. It's going to have a bike lane and then 10 feet of green space and a sidewalk, five feet wide. So you're going to be able to take a car, and that's the reason we're doing Zion, because that's the top part of, you've heard, the, does anybody remember the box that everybody laughed at me about? Well, that's a reality now. Everybody thought that was a foolish thing. And I said, we're going to build this box. So what we have now, we've got 265 completed. We're working on uh, 16 to 15th Street. You go to MLK, or you can go all the way around to MLK, and then it's going to, at the smokehouse, it's going to go straight, and I'd, if I could get enough money, we'd go around to 112 and take it on to the airport. 
but it's going to hook up right there. It's, it's uh, going to hook up about where uh, you go to the Sam's Club and then Van Ash is going to take you right into the mall. And then if you want to, you can get on Zion and go all the way back to 265 and go all the way around the city. You can walk, ride a bike, drive a car, or take a bus. That is going to completely change the whole face of this city when that's completed. And we've done that just, that was just out of sure determination and a great staff. Um, and, I, and, and to answer your, the second part of your question, um, yes, both of those streets that you mentioned, both Shiloh and Salem, are on the city's master street plan. Yep. Um, and they're projects that, you know, as development occurs, we'll be looking at extending. Uh, they're on um, priority lists that will be considered for, for future funding. They didn't make this bond program. There were other needs. Um, so certainly we recognize that, um, that the one of the big problems with that congestion in the area is the lack of alternate routes and so uh, it's something that we're looking at um, it's just a matter of priorities and, and uh, getting that to rise to the top well guess which road we use instead of salem or Shiloh? yep yeah that's why we've got to build that road one thing too that staff does a great job on when we have these uh, particularly the large infrastructure problem projects, a lot of infrastructure projects. If you go on the website and click on projects, you can see, like, you know, Jeremy was talking about with the parking deck, you can see the stats, you can see some pictures and all, and the, the uh, road projects, sidewalk projects, etc. Well, we've got about time for one more question, and then we, yes. here for gosh mid long time long time long enough to know that you are doing a great job and i appreciate it uh, all the time you know you i don't see you guys i see you guys work for you and and uh, i appreciate what you've done and, and the way it's changed the city it's just a, a gentler kind of place to live i think by now than it was in the 60s but anyway i always i didn't care about some things in the 60s i do care then about things now what I care about now, I think everybody in this room cares about, and that's value of their property. And the things that happen in our environment, our social environment, that change the value of property. I live in a single family residential area by me. And there are people in my neighborhood, the University Heights uh, neighborhood, who believe have stated that uh, we have over occupancy. We have people buying houses and stuffing them full of big kids. I live next to four football clubs, but they have big loud parties. And when I call it on, I get the execution. I hear things in my yard, I get verbal threats, I get cranks. That's the only thing that somebody told me the other day, I did, you've been cranked. Uh, well, I don't really understand that. People come to my house steadily for two days looking for dogs that would get away, that weren't to get away. I didn't mind it so much. I was building a rock wall. I was happy to put down a stone and those dogs to people. Unfortunately, for the children, the dogs would cry because they had seen the beautiful pictures of these dogs that supposedly were trying to get away. Uh, I didn't give my phone number, just had my address, and they knew my name. little I know about law, you don't have to be able to prove something in a court of law for it to be true. So I, I believe I do not feel this. Um, I'm tired of living next to these guys, these students, these party goers. And they are increasingly taking away from the ambiance of University Heights, which is one of the reasons I moved. I had built two houses on Malcolm Hill, and I moved to this particular house, and I built this house a decade ago because I read the city ordinance, a long word, I believe, for law. And in the city ordinances, it says no more than three unrelated people are to live in a house. You're correct. It's against the law. It is being done. I can point to 16 houses. I walk down three streets, Garden, Hartman, and Palmer, a little bit of Markham, 
parts. I made very little effort, and I got dozens of signatures just simply saying, we're tired of this. Would you look into it? Enforce the law. Our property values are dropping. <coughs> And the University Heights list serve and the people who comment on it, there's been the opinion that <coughs> Kit, Kit Williams has no interest in enforcing that ordinance, which is a shame. Uh, because you know, when we start picking and choosing the laws that you're going to enforce, uh, I'm in the wrong country. And I suggest that you would think about moving maybe to a different city. It's ridiculous. Now, I don't mind being black, and I don't mind being called names. I, I've been in the movie for a long time. I'm kind of well, used to that myself. I'm quite used to that, yes. And I'd be having this conversation with you, but I've been by your office a couple of times, and you were busy doing your job somewhere else. No worries. This is not a great big concern. Uh, as big a concern as other things. But I chose to build two houses on that hill. I've seen the property values down and it should be going up. Nobody wants to live next to half a dozen or four or five students. There's some beautiful girls who moved down in the corner of Palmer and Sawyer Lane, which is very close to me. Wonderful girls and at least half a dozen boyfriends for each of them. And they have parties and they're loud enough. I can hear them. Heck, the other night I called the police because I couldn't hear the news because of the party that was going across the other side of an eight-foot privacy fence, which I built, which I've been slated for. So the point is, property values. I looked at it, I read the ordinances, I presumed that the law was going to protect my investment. This is not the case. This has not been the case. Okay. And I, excuse me, Stop. this reminds me, my wife and wanted me to say, hey, don't worry about these new ordinances that have been all in the brouhaha lately. Enforce the ordinances that you have before you make any more. Uh, again, I got, I got dozens of signatures on a petition and I gave them to Rhonda and the other fellow. I don't know what happened to them. Okay. Uh, <coughs> or four meetings. We know where your concerns are. So you gave some petitions to your council members? Yeah. I went around and talked to people in my block who, oh. uh, you know, they're university professors, they're able to write, excuse me, for what I call aging out. I'm aging out. Uh, me but too. the point is, uh, they don't only have the phone. Oh. I know that I know that Jeremy's in charge of that department. Yolanda reports mm -hmm. to you. Yolanda reports to Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Co Co Code compliance. Chad. Chad. Yeah, Chad. Sure. My wife, bless her heart, works at the Vet Veterans Administration Hospital, and we get up at four o'clock, and she gets off to work, and I walk the blocks. And I see houses with four to six cars in the driveway. So it's easy for me. I have taken pictures of these cars, including the license plates, because I have seen the police look up the license plate and find out where that person lived and follow that person's house. That's all I ask them to do. If they look at the pictures and look at the license plates and find out that these people live here, you know, the trick is they just turn in. It's very difficult. But I'm giving my council members 
Robert, we need to, we're supposed yeah. to be out of the room. Yeah. We're, we're running. Just, I do, I do, and yeah. Jeremy will certainly yeah. look into yeah. it. If you have pictures, bring them by the office. I'll be glad to look at them with you. Bring your pictures by the office. I'll be glad to look at them with you. We need to get I'm it, sorry I wasn't Get it in the there. correct system. Get it to code enforcement. You can see me. You've known me a long time. Yeah, uh, well, I'll, I'll do that. I'll take another walk in the morning. Uh, I don't know what happened to those pictures. Okay. You might have. Alan Long. Yeah, yeah, but I'll go. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rob. Thank you all. We're out of time. Uh, okay, thank you. We're adjourned.